Hello, I'm Mr. Marse from Outwood Academy, Acklam. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at lenses. It's a triple physics topic. You're going to need a couple of things before you start. You're going to need yourself a ruler, some paper, um, a pen. You're going to need a pencil and you are going to need a calculator. If you haven't got a calculator, I recommend you um, download a scientific app to your phone. There's quite a lot floating around on the App Store or on Google Play and you can find yourself a decent scientific calculator. Okay, so before you start, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and I'd like you to have a go at these questions on the screen here. Okay, they are just recall questions. The more times that you engage with the previous uh, learning that you've done, the more chance it has it of staying in your head and you being able to recall it quickly and just being able to know it. So I'm going to wait for five seconds, then I'm going to let you pause the video. When you're ready, I'll reveal the answers. Okay, <laughs> it's enough time. Right, here's what you should have got. Get yourself a red pen and check these. If you got them right, tick them. If you have not, it's really important that you change them because by changing them and engaging with them, it's more likely that you'll remember these. Okay, I'm not gonna read them to you. You can read them yourself. And if I'm moving too fast, again, just pause me. So in this lesson, we are going to, as I said, look at lenses. The challenge objective is to be able to draw um, ray diagrams for lenses. So we'll explain what that is later um, in the video. And the Aspire is that you can describe the image formed in a convex and a concave lens. Again, we'll look at what a convex and concave lenses are within the lesson. And we're gonna calculate some magnification. Okay, so let's start off with this. What is a lens? Well, a lens, as it just says on the on the um, PowerPoint there, is a piece of transparent glass or plastic that refracts light. And we should have done refraction before. It was on the starter. That's why it's important to do that. So refraction means that it causes light to, um, to slow down or speed up, depending on the density, and therefore change direction. So a lens changes the direction of light. Um, and we'll just see that, that that's due to its density. Now, here's an image of a lens. It looks quite complicated at this point. So we can see that there's this stop sign here, and then that goes into your eye. Now your eye contains a lens, and your eye then changes the direction you see how these, these these lines are coming closer together of this light, which causes it to um, be focused on the back of your eye. But there's loads of other different types of lenses. So we've got the one there, which is the one in your eye. Um, we've got, um, that is a lens uh, from a camera lens, just sort of looking through it. You can see that um, it's focused, this image that is otherwise out of focus of this forest. Um, we've got contact lenses. So if the lens in your eye is not working correctly, if it's not focusing the image on the back of your retina, then what you would need to do is you would put a contact lens in and that contact lens would, would change where the image was focusing. The Another type of lens is a telescope. So telescopes are used in order to focus um, the light from coming from very, very long distances away so that you can observe planets, um, galaxies, whatever it is you want to look at with your telescope, really. Um, glasses, again, like a contact lens, used to correct vision in order to change the focal length of whatever you are seeing. A magnifying lens is used to make things bigger. So you can look at an image and it, it can appear larger. So that's another use of lenses. And cameras, uh, and there are loads more, but they're just some of them. So lenses are really, really important and you, you probably use them far more than, than you know. Um, and you're using them constantly because your eye is one. And I'm using one to record this video because I'm gonna use this visualizer here, which has a lens in it, which is focusing this image. Okay, every time I press this button, the autofocus, there you go, the lens has done its job into focusing this image. So, lenses are important. So, there are two types, and they have special names, convex and concave. This is what they look like. So, this is a convex. So, you can see on this image, we have got four um, light rays going in. This is a representation, but remember, um, 
light travels in straight lines. So the light is going into the lens and then the lens is changing the direction of the light and on this red dot here, which we call the principal focus, the light is being focused and that's where the image would, would be um, focused. So if that was, the, you know, if this was your eye, that's where the, the, whatever you were looking at would, would be in focus. If your retina was anywhere else, it would be blurry. Okay, I'm not going to read that too. You can read that yourself. But the key thing is that you know that this is a convex lens. Um, in order, so convex brings light together. So think of the the word conference. Okay, or if, you know, if you go to a conference, it's a coming together of people. So that's exactly the same. That's where that word comes from. Now, if we draw this on a ray diagram, it gets quite complicated. So what we can do is, is we can use this symbol. Okay, so I'm gonna just draw that. So actually, so this symbol, yeah, if we draw it, it looks like this. Okay, now we can see that in reality, that symbol is it's just the same as the lens, but we've just taken the middle part off. It just makes things a little bit less confusing when we draw a ray diagram. So let, let's write that. So that is a convex. lens okay um, the next one so we've got a concave lens okay now um, the concave lens uh, the number name for concave lens is a diversion lens it makes things spread out like if you go to diversion so where's where is the first lens the convex lens here that focused the light this concave lens actually makes the light spread out um, and it can actually be focused behind, but we'll come to that later. Okay, so again, you can read that. And again, this is the symbol that you need to know. So again, get your pencil. So rather than drawing that full thing, what we do is we draw this. So the ends of the lens are drawn like that. Again, it's that shape of the lens that that represents. So this is a concave. Right, so time for you to do a little bit of thinking about what we talked about and a little bit of um, engaging with that information. So I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to write those sentences out on your piece of paper and complete that activity. And as soon as you are finished, make sure you're fully finished though. Don't, don't do it if you aren't because that will totally miss out on, on the learning. So finish the activity unpause the video and I'll go through the answers. I'm just gonna wait for a couple of seconds. Okay, I've done waiting. This is what you should have got. You should have said that light lenses, sorry, cause light to refract. You should have said that there are two types of lenses and they are in here, so that was easy. Uh, concave and convex, either way around is fine. Sketch the lens in figure one. So you should have drawn this in your book and you should have said that that lens is a, wait for it, convex lens, okay? It's convex because it's converging this light and that symbol, which we already had drawn, but you might as well draw it again. Uh, sketch the lens in figure two. Again, you should have drawn this and you should have labeled it as a concave lens with this symbol. And a little bit of challenge, what's this dot called? Well, this dot is called the principal focus. Okay, all the way from slide number two. Right, let's move on. So this is the, the big part of the lesson, being able to draw ray diagrams from lenses. It's the challenge objective. You can see I'll put it in red. Um, and this is, it's gonna lead into this Aspire as well. We can't do this Aspire unless we can do this. So let's, let's have a model. So this is the reason why I've got my visualizer out for this lesson and why it's so important and, and why um, this lesson won't work unless you see me drawing this because you need to draw these two. So a convex, so this is a convex lens. So we're gonna start with a convex lens. Now they've drawn, uh, so this model um, has drawn the full lens. Now I don't like to draw the full lens. It gets a bit messy. So I'm gonna do the symbol. So what you need to do is you need to get your ruler I need to get your pencil. Um, we're gonna leave some space in our book. Now we're gonna draw a lens. 
The first thing we're going to do though is we are going to draw on this line. This line here is called our principal axis. It's, it's a straight line that goes through the very middle of the lens. And if it doesn't go through the middle, it won't work. So it has to be in the very center. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my lens. Um, I'm going to figure out how much space I've got. So I've got, let's say if I go from about here to about there, 15 centimeters. So I'm going to draw my lens exactly in the middle of that. So half of 14 is seven and, a, and then a half to get to that 15. So I'm going to draw my lens here. All right, I'm going to do a bit of space. I'm going to have three lines above and three lines below. So there's my lens. And I'm going to draw on that, that axis, which I said was 15 centimeters. So seven and a half there. And these are really important that you do try and keep your scales correct because we will be looking at the, the measurements of these. Okay, so you can see that my lens, I'm not drawing it very well, is drawn perpendicular, so at 90 degrees, to this principal axis. I'm just going to focus that a little bit more so it's a little bit clearer. In fact, I might, there we go, let's, let's zoom into that because this is uh, this is the bit that's important for us. So the other things you might notice are these little red lines. So you need to know what those are and they're what we call our focal points. So when we looked at the image earlier, we saw that as the light went through the lens, it was brought to a focus and that that is the focus point so we've got um our first focus point so what i would suggest we do is let's do that first focus point at three centimeters so draw and make a mark at three centimeters from your lens and the second red dot is a 2f what we call 2f that's just the length of two focal points so we'll make that one at six centimeters so that is f and that is 2f. Now lenses work in both directions so we also need exactly the same behind and the focal distance is the same forward and backwards. So again another three centimeters so I'll just put six there so three centimeters is my 1f and then that one is my 2f so that's the focal point and that's two times the focal point. Okay, so we should have this so far. Make sure you're at this stage. So what happens now is, well, that's what I just explained there, the length and the focal length. So we're going to put an object. So this object could be absolutely anything. Anything that your eye is looking at um, is focused by a lens. But we're going to make this really simple for now. We're going to just draw an object um, and we're going to represent it as an arrow. The arrowhead is really important because it tells us which way up the image is. So I'm going to draw my, um, I'm going to use centimeters. So I'm going to go for a two centimeter image. Now, where it is, is really important. You can see that this image is described as being um, beyond 2F, which means it's further away than two focal distances. So let's have a look. Let's draw an image. Uh, let's draw one that is two centimeters tall somewhere beyond 2f so there we go and if i said that that's exactly two centimeters my arrowhead has got to be exactly on two centimeters something like that okay and let's label that so that is the object and it is two centimeters that's really important because you can see as part of the a spire objective, we need to calculate magnification. So we need to know the size of the object in order to do that. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, oh, we don't do that. This is what we do. We click on here and you can see that there's this line. I'm just showing you on and off. So this line here represents um, how we draw a ray diagram. So what we do is we go from the very top of the image and we draw a line that is parallel with our principal axis that goes into the lens okay and then from here from from the center of that lens oh i just realized i haven't um told you what type of lens this is look there we go look it's a convex lens so we draw our next arrow goes through the focal point so through this point here 
So we just draw that and we just in a straight line and we just let it continue. Okay, so it looks something like that diagram. What we do need to do is we need to show which direction that this light is going. So we're going to include arrows to show that. Okay, there's, we're going to build another line. The next line here goes, it's my favorite line, this one, because it's just simple and it's always the same. It goes from, again, from the top of the image, right through the center of the, whether the intersection between the principal axis and the lens and the center of the lens, goes right through there. And you just line that up and wherever that goes, you continue your line again show the direction that the light is traveling okay so we can start to see it already even by just drawing these two lines that we've got a point where our light is being focused so this is where the image is going to appear but we can draw a third line just to just to check that but you only ever need to draw these first um two but i'll show you all three so the next line looks like this the reason it's dotted is just because it's an optional line this one goes from the top through the, the focal point here, the one on the same side of the image, sorry, the same size of the object, and hits the lens. And again, you should see, depending on how, how good your drawing is, mine's, mine's a little bit wrong there. All right, so, uh, there we go. So it's, yeah, if you, can, if, if you get your scale a little bit wrong, this, this line doesn't always work. That's, that's a terrible job, but there we go. Okay, so that goes through the image. Now we can see that all of our points are focusing there. So that was the top of the object. And this one here must be the top of the object. So we're going to draw our line down. We're going to put our arrowhead in as well. So it looks exactly the same. And we now see, as you see here, this is the image that is produced. So let's have a look at this image because the Aspire says that we have to be able to um, describe the image formed in convex and concave lenses. So this is a convex and this is the image form. So let's try and describe that image. The reason I do this in pencil is because what you would do is you wouldn't leave your, your diagram like that. You would get a rubber and you would sort it out. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to press the pause button. I'm going to come back and I'm going to sort out that um, so like the gray diagram. Okay, there we go. And if by magic, the ray diagram has fixed itself. I did realize that I haven't told you which way the light's going. So we needed to make sure that that arrow goes on there too. So let's have a look at this image. So we can see that this image is upside down. That's the first thing we can see. This one was pointing upwards and this one is pointing downwards. Um, so we could say that the image is use the fancy word inverted so an image could be inverted or the right way up this way is inverted the next thing we need to look at is whether or not it's got bigger or smaller so we measured the first one as two centimeters let's measure this one this one is 1.6 centimeters and that is the image So it's got smaller. So the word that we use for that is the word diminished. Okay. And the last thing that we need to look at, if it's in this orange box here, is whether or not it's real or whether or not it's virtual. It's a bit of a strange explanation, this. So a real image is one that is formed on the opposite side of the lens to the object. So imagine you're looking through a window, you look through that window and you see something on the other side. If you were to reach through the window, you would be able to grab that object, it's real, okay? If you are looking in a mirror, you can't reach through and grab the image that you see. It's not really on the other side, even though it looks like it is. Okay, so that's what we call a virtual image. So a real image is one that is on the opposite side of the, the lens to the object. And a virtual image is one that actually appears on the same side of the, um, the lens to the object. And we'll, we'll have a look at those when we look at um, 
the ray diagram for a concave lens. Okay, so we've reached the part of the lesson now where it's time for you to um, to go on and, and have a go at this on your own, to do some independent practice. Um, so this table here, I want you to copy this table into your books and you're gonna fill in um, the, these three columns here because the Aspire objective says that you can describe the image. So we're describing it for, for its size, its orientation, and if it's real or not. Um, and these are all from the convex lenses. The concave lens we'll do at the very end. We're not gonna do the magnification column yet because that's a skill that we still need to look at. So we've done outside 2F and I've put that image here so you can see, so we've got a model of exactly what you need to do in case you, um, uh, in case you want some reference. So these should be dead easy to, to fill in um, these first, this first column here. If you know what you're doing, then you don't need to, to, to watch this part of the video. So just pause it and uh, get yourself somewhere nice and quiet, get distractions away, and make sure you've got your equipment set up and, and just take your time with these uh, these drawings and, and go through and try and do each one. What I will do is I will do the at 2F one now in case you feel as though you need a little bit more practice. Again, at any stage whilst I'm doing this, just stop, pause the video, and you can carry on on your own. So first off, we're gonna draw our um, our principal axis. So our principal axis, remember, is just a straight line. We're gonna put our lens in the middle. And we'll do three above, three below. And they are all convex, so convex. We put that symbol on, and we'll do the same focus points on the last time. So we'll have a, a three centimeter focal point, which means that we have a principal focus at three, and two principal focuses at six. Make sure we've got those nice and accurate. Again on this side, so three and six, label those, F, two F, F, two F. So our image now needs to be at two F. So dead on this line, and we're gonna make it um, nice and easy, nice easy numbers, we'll have a two centimeter image. So don't use the lines in your book because the books aren't quite each a centimeter. Make sure it is uh, 90 degrees, so it's perpendicular. There we go. I've missed slightly, but that, that is close enough. I've just got a very sharp pencil, that's all. Um, so if you know what to do, you can get on with that. If not, we can do it together. I'm gonna to zoom it in. So we can see exactly what's going on. And I'll just press the, the focus. There we go. So we'll draw our first line, which is a straight line parallel with the principal axis into the lens. Put on the arrowhead to show the direction. Then we've got from where it's hit the lens through the principal focus. And just carry that line through showing again the direction and then the next one this is the only one we're going to draw here is from the very top through the middle okay and you can see the direction and these images have found a point here where they are converged there so you should see that that is exactly on 2f um, that was the top, so that's now the top. So it's not exactly the same image because it's now inverted. So if you know what you're doing, pause the video. I'm just gonna go through now and this is what you should be writing your table. So the size, well, this was two centimeters. So let's label that on. So that's two centimeters. Remember this is the object. So this is the image. And it is 
also two centimeters. So for the first one, the size is neither diminished or magnified, it's the same size. Okay. Um, orientation. So is it inverted or is it upright? Well, it's been flipped round, so we would say that it's inverted. And the last thing, is it real or is it virtual? Well, it's on the opposite side of the lens, therefore it is a real image. Okay, so that one here was at to F, let's make that a subheading. So I'd like you to now carry on, go through, have a go at the between 2F and F, uh, the at the F, I'll give you a little heads up now that the, the, the F one, you will produce something that you will not be able to focus. If you do that, then you've got it right. And the closer than F, you will produce an image where you will have to trace it backwards. You might get a little bit stuck there, but don't worry, when I'm going through the answers, I will show you exactly how I solved that. Okay, so pause the video now because I'm about to go through the answers. I want you to make sure you've drawn the diagrams and completed your table first. I'll do this for a second. That's enough of that. Okay, so, out, object at 2F is what we've just drawn. And you should have produced that, which, as we've just drawn, says it's real, it's inverted, it's the same size. So this is the first one you should have drawn on your own. So between F and 2F. So anywhere between there will produce an image that looks like this. First line. And there. So what we've got is we've got an image that is, wait for it. There we go. It's real because it's on the opposite side of the lens. It's magnified because it's much bigger. And it's inverted because it's uh, flipped upside down. Okay, this is the one I said would be a bit weird. It shouldn't have focused, and this is why. Image here, line hits the um, the lens, goes through the principal focus. The next one, it goes through the um, through the center of the lens, and you notice that these two lines are here are parallel. And what I mean by parallel is that they're never going to meet which means if we can trace them forwards, they're never gonna meet. If we trace them backwards, behind the line, they're never gonna meet. So we cannot produce an image at F. So no image will be produced there. Okay. All right, now this one, object inside F, this is the one which will have looked a bit strange. So we do that line through the principal focus. We do this line that goes through the center of the lens and the principal axis. And you see that they're never going to meet here. So if you now know how to correct this one, do it. What should happen is you should trace it back. You should draw two the dotted lines behind, and then they will cross here. We can see here that this is a virtual image. Um, and what that means is it's on the same side of the lens as the... Um, as the image, sorry, as the object. The image is on the same side of the lens as the um, object. So it's virtual, but it is upright and it is magnified. And there's another definition of virtual on here, which means that the light does not actually pass through it. Okay, so just check your table. And if you got any of those wrong, what I'd like you to do is just to skip back to where I just showed you those um, those quick ray diagrams and see if you can see where you went wrong. If you got them all right, absolutely fantastic. You are ready to move on. So the final part of the Aspire objective we need to do is to be able to calculate the magnification. So all throughout these diagrams, we've calculated the size of the object and we've calculated the size of the image. And we've said whether it's been magnified or diminished or in this case, the same size. If it's been magnified or diminished, you need to be able to calculate how much by. So this is how we calculate magnification. Now, you've done calculating magnification before. In biology, in the cells topic, it's, it's one of the very first things that you do in science. Um, 
so this isn't new and, it, and it, it's just an opportunity to, to link um, to make links to somewhere else in, in the science curriculum um, and practice something that might come up on multiple exams so this screen here looks pretty complicated but it's not there's a lot of information on because um, it's going to give you an opportunity to, to get really 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 good at this so the very top here you can see this is my model so what I've done is I've taken an exam question um, and all you have to do in the exam question is to look at this image now you can see as I've as I've said earlier that this is on squared paper so it's, it's going to produce a more accurate image than than the ones that we're drawing here on our lined paper so all I've done is I got a ruler and I measured these images so that object I should say image that's an object that object was 1.2 centimeters and that image is 3.7 centimeters and then you just have to use this calculation this um, this equation now it's it's given to you so you don't need to um, to actually remember this so you just need to put the numbers in so you can see in my model here what I've done is I've written magnification equals image divided by object and I'm just going to put those in. So the magnification is 3.7 because that's just coming directly from there. I'm not putting the centimeters in because they're both in centimeters, so that's fine. And we're going to divide that by the length of the object, which is 1.2 centimeters, which gives us 3.01 on a calculator. Um, and we can just round that to times three. So it's, it's magnified by three times. There are no units of magnification, so you can put the X there if you want to say that it's timed by three, but you don't need to. Three would be a totally acceptable answer. So try and make your, your working out look like this. So what I've done in this table is we've done something which is called faded practice. So faded practice is, is just designed to, to take you from, from a really concrete example like, like this um, into one where you get confident so that you are able to answer questions that are more written like this. So, on your book, let's just put A. And we're gonna we're gonna work through this one together. So, the first thing we always do is we write down what we know. The same of any equation. So we know in A the image equals six centimeters, and the object equals four centimeters. Now in terms of highlighting a misconception, this is where pupils normally go wrong. They're normally absolutely fine with doing the calculation, but the, the problem is that they just forget which one is the object and which one is the image, and it's really easily done. So just, just check your answer, make sure you look at the question, uh, proofread it, and, and you'll be fine. Okay, the next thing is to write down the calculation. So we can see it's, it's up here in the top corner of the... Um, of the presentation is there so we can just write mag you don't need to write magnification each time equals image divided by the object okay so let's now substitute our numbers in so magnification equals so the image so the size of the image is six centimeters so we'll just put that in there we don't need to write centimeters divided by so we just follow that that sign down the object so four so magnification is six divided by four and it's now up to you to fill that in okay all right let's have a go at part b so part b exactly the same now I'm not going to sit and do part B for you. That is for you guys to do. So all I've done is I've just taken out one extra thing each time on this on this faded practice to the point where we get to part C where you're, you're doing the whole thing yourself. And then there's a couple of questions, D and E, and then a stretch one where uh, we're talking about a diminished image rather than one that's been magnified. So pause the video, take your time, have a go at those questions. Um, and I'll be back with you with the answers. Okay, I'm gonna do the nodding head thing a little bit to give you, uh, give you time to pause. Okay, answers. 
Okay, this is what you should have done. I'm not gonna read through them. You can you can read yourself. Uh, if you need more time, pause it. Have a look through those answers. If you didn't get any of those answers, go back to the um, to the, the the last part of the video where I'm just explaining what to do and make sure that you are um, happy and that you are able to do this. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to use this skill that we've just learned here um, and put it into the context of what we've just been doing. So you have already drawn all of your ray diagrams. So what you need to do is go back to your table, so this one here, and you need to go and look back at your ray diagrams, look at the image size. So for instance, on this one, it was two centimeters and look at the, uh, sorry, the object size was two centimeters and the image size was also two centimeters and then calculate your magnification. So for this one, which was at 2f, it would be two divided by two, which the magnification, there was no, there's, there's magnification of one. So it's not magnified at all. Okay, have we got that? Show you working out in each of those columns. Now I can't give you um, answers apart from that 2f one because it will depend on the scale that you've drawn your diagram. You'll, you'll all have different answers. Um, but the, the idea is that you're just comfortable with that um, with that formula and we're comfortable of calculating magnification. I've come to the big question. And by big question, what I mean is, this is the question I selected at the very start before I started planning this lesson. And I thought if, if a student can answer this question, then they can achieve all of the objectives. They can do absolutely everything I wanted them to do. This is you know, the hardest type of question that you'd be given on an exam paper to do with this. So let's see if you can do it. And if you can do it, then brilliant. Okay, brilliant. You, you right now, you can, you can do this lesson. All right, it doesn't mean that you don't have to come back to it later. Cause just cause you can do it now, doesn't mean that you'll be able to do it in six uh, months time, nine months time or in your GCSEs. But it means that you definitely got the capacity to do it again. So this is drawn on um, squared paper. Like I said, in the exam, it will be done on squared paper in order to get the scale right. Um, but you won't have this exam question in front of you. So we're gonna, I'm gonna have to give you some things for scale. So what I've said is, is to use each square as 0 0.25 centimeters. And the reason I picked that is not because it's a nice number, but because it will fit on your page. So we're going to draw the principal axis together and then you are going to try and figure it out. So let's go with this. So the focus length is three centimeters from the lens. So it's the same as what we were doing before. Let's give ourselves a bit of space in order to do this. So three centimeter focal length. Um, so we'll draw our principal axis. We'll draw our, let's put our lens in the center. So how, how long is our piece of paper? About 17 centimeters. So if we do about eight and a half, so about here. So we'll draw our lens. Now, part of the thing you'd have to do in the exam is to be able to spot what type of lens that is because it it, um, it tells you it's a conversion lens, but we've not used the word conversion. So you have to spot what type of lens it is. Let's make our lens one, two, three high and one, two, three below. So if you know, do it now. If not, this is something that you need to go back and look at. So I'm just gonna tell you, so it's conversion lens, so it's a lens that does that. It's gonna bring light together. So focal point at three centimeters. So there's three and there's three and that would be three have to make sure you get these absolutely spot on any little error might lead to you getting this question wrong not because you don't know what to do but just because of the scale and another three okay let's label those f one focal length two focal lengths focal length two focal lengths okay so the object is going to be 2.25 centimeters from the lens. So it's it's within F. So 2.25, so that's 2.5, that's 
one, 2.2, and then part way between there. So that is where we're going to draw the object. Um, because I, I've made that as um, as nine squares. I might actually just check that. No, I think it's, it's eight squares, isn't it? So it's not... <laughs> It's not 2.25, it's, it's not 0.25 times by 8. All right, it, it's 2. <laughs> 2 centimeters. So I'm going to change that very quickly so that we, we don't get confused. So the object is 2 centimeters from the lens. Okay, so it's not there. It is there let's get rid of that other one so we don't get confused okay and i measured that to be how many squares high one two three one two three four five six seven eight uh nine high so let me just check so we can see that i'm counting here one two three four five six seven that goes to the top of the point so it's seven high so it'd be seven times 0 0.25 the reason i'm doing this bit for you is because this is just a little bit of maths it um it doesn't tell you whether or not you can do this question but scales are so important in science um especially when we're drawing graphs so it's really important so hopefully you are following along so that was right i was just checking so 1.75 high so We'll find 1.7 and we'll move an extra one. So that's 1.6, that's 1.7, and a part of that. There. So your arrow, 1.75. So this is where the, the sort of error is definitely going to come in, is, is how accurately you have been able to do this. As I say, in the exam, it's going to be a lot easier because it's going to give you the piece of paper. Right. You are set up now. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop helping. And it's up to you to figure it out. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that this is the object. I'm going to tell you it's 1.75 centimeters. But that's it. Now I've stopped helping. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pause it. And I'll give you the answer at the very end of the video. Okay, let's see how I solve it. So first thing is to draw your um, your first line parallel to the principal axis. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Um, and then we go through the first focal point, which is here. Okay, so our arrows are going that way. The next thing is to draw the favorite line through the very middle. And you get that. And then you should notice, oh no, these these lines here, these lines of light are never going to join. So they're never going to focus on that side of the image. So we're not going to get a real image. We're going to get a virtual image. So you trace backward. Let's start with this one. Trace back. So dot, dot, dot. Use the dot dashed line so that it distinguishes it from your, um, your other one. And this is why I said give yourself a bit of space. Yes, I, I saw what was going to happen here. And again, we do it the same on this one. Back, 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 back. So in the exam, you get one mark for each of these lines that you draw. So that's two marks so far. All right, and then you just have to make sure, so this is the problem with the, the dashed lines that you're absolutely positive that they're crossing. So they're crossing here. Okay, remember the top of the arrow, and we have to make sure that this is really perpendicular, so 90 degrees from there. Okay, put your arrow head on, just to show which way up it is. So, we've got an image that has been magnified, all right? And it's virtual because it's on the same side as the, the object. So there's that image. And what we need to do is we need to measure it in centimeters, so, I was checking, yeah, that was 1.75. So this one is five, I think. Yeah, it's one and five centimeters. 
For me, yours might be slightly different depending on exactly how you do the diagram. So now we're going to do the, the calculation. So we have got the object equals 1.75 centimeters. The image equals five centimeters. We've got our calculation. So our calculation is given there. So magnification equals image divided by the object. Okay, magnification is unknown, so we'll leave it as magnification. The image here was five, hopefully you picked the right one, divided by 1.75. Okay, if you let's have a go. Five over 1.75 equals, I got 2.857. So I'm gonna round that up to 2.9 times. So it's 2.9 times larger. Now there will be in the exam a source of error. So you'd be allowed um, a couple of squares each way. So if you've got an answer that is probably anything from about 2.6 times larger to about 3.3, 3.4 times larger, then that will be absolutely fine as I say. Um, it's not going to be perfectly accurate because we're, we're doing it on, on our lined paper in our books. All right, if you got this, brilliant. All right, this lesson has worked really, really well for you and hopefully you know exactly now how to draw ray diagrams, um, how to, uh, what a convex lens looks like, what a concave lens look like, um, and how to calculate magnification. Okay, I will uh, see you next time.